It was an exciting day to be a door dog, because he and the doorman were expecting a very exciting delivery. <sighs> Didn't you sleep last night? <laughs> Me neither. I was too excited about our big delivery. Oh, oh boy, are we glad to see you. <laughs> doorman said a big delivery, he meant a big delivery. What's in this thing? My Weston town. A whole town? Boop. In a box? Uh-huh. It's for my train set. I wish I could set it up right now. But I'm on duty. <laughs> Yeah, we'll set it up. We love trains. Hey, oh. thanks. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Hundley and the doorman had built the most amazing train set ever. There was a future town, a farm town, and even a mountain town. <laughs> Western town goes right there. Relax, Hunley. George and his friends will be very careful. Uh -huh. Sure. Absolutely. It's okay, fella. If you're worried, why don't you stay here and keep an eye on them? You can nap when they're done. I wish there was a quick way to sift through all this dirt. Hey, good idea, George. We can make sifters with our fingers. But sifting is a slow business and boring. It made a sleepy dog even sleepier. like a miner in some old western movie. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, little pin. First we had you, then we lost you. Wish we'd see you once again. First we had you, then we lost you. Wish we'd see you once again. This was bigger than the pin from the box. If the stranger used it to make holes, the pin would fall through them. But this was a perfect size nail. It would make a hole that would let the dirt out, but keep the pin in. all set up. Ah! Aw, and you saved the last pin for me. Cool. <laughs> Hundley was happy the train was back on track. This is great, and I've got the perfect name for it. Hundleyville. What do you think of that, Hunley? Uh, Hunley? Prairieville was neat and clean, had the best sheriff you've ever seen. His deputy was on the ball. It's no secret that monkeys like cars. All kinds of cars. <laughs> No! 
wipeout? That reminds me. You should have seen me almost wipe out at the derby. I was coming down the hill, accelerating to maximum gravitational pull, and then I lost a wheel. Huh? I think Bill is talking about a soapbox derby, George. It's where kids build and race their own cars. Ah. And there's a derby today on Boysenberry Hill. Oh. Check it out. Ooh. Bill, that is one nice looking vehicle. Did you build it yourself? I sure did. It's got rear wheel steering, caliper brakes, and a parachute. You have a parachute in there? It pays to be prepared. <laughs> Me too. I want to build a car like that and almost wipe out on a hill. <laughs> you kids want to enter the soapbox derby? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm done, yes. If you're serious, then you'll need the rule book. It pretty much tells you everything you need and how to put it together. Hey, you want some help? I was a pretty mean derby racer in my day. Sorry, but that's against the rules. Contestants have to build their own cars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you're welcome to borrow anything you see around the house. Ooh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to put on the brake. <laughs> Did he say brake? and Allie had their break. Well, it looks okay. We can test it on the way to the race. Racer's ready. On your mark. Get set. <laughs> it works! <laughs> hey, guys! You made it! <laughs> Go! George and Bill were neck and neck. Come on, faster. Uh-oh. Meet the winner, Farmer Rinkin's Wagon. It was a rather unusual entry, but it met all the rules. And our runners up, George and Dally, <laughs> and Bill. <laughs> George was trying his best not to wake up the man with the yellow hat. But today was Saturday, and the man was taking George to the zoo to see a dragon. Ooh. <laughs> okay, they weren't really going to see a fire-breathing dragon. They were going to see a Komodo dragon, which is more like a giant lizard. Excited about seeing a dragon? <laughs> so a subway is a huge network of trains that runs under the ground. 
Yeah, there's a subway right below our feet. It takes thousands of people uh, and the occasional monkey to places all around the city, like the zoo. And the entrance is right down those stairs. <laughs> hey, wait up! <laughs> no! George, stop! We have to... <gasps> Pay. Sorry about that, officer. It's his first time on the subway. Oh, not to worry. On my watch, monkeys ride free. Oh, thanks. George? George? Ah! Oh, ah! Wait, ah! Uh, here you go. George, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Huh? Wait, my, my monkey's on the train. George, get off at the next station and wait for me there. Oh, boy. What? George, hold on. Stay on the train and go to the zoo. I know it's a giraffe. It's the only thing I know how to make. Your attention, please. Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one hour delay on the uptown line. One hour? That's it, subway's out, running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a dragon? Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw an Italian opera singer, some Russian dancers, and a Swiss yodel. George had arrived at the zoo. Oh no. <gasps> George! <gasps> you made it, George! All by yourself! And faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo because I think they. Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but it took us all day to get here, and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah, well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> George was excited because he was going to see his very first baseball game. Marco's team, the Cubby Bears, versus the Tiger Babies. Hey, George, throw me the ball! <laughs> I just wish I could bat as well as I catch. I still have never hit a home run. You'll do it someday, Marco. And in the meantime, you're still our favorite shortstop. <laughs> Come on, George. I'll introduce you to the coach. Bye, Mommy, Papi. Bye. Bye. Have, have a, a good, good game. game. Hey, coach. This is my friend George. Put her there, kid. Uh, if I'm going to get good at batting, I need more practice. Would you mind pitching? Hey, who's running this outfit? Nah, it's a good idea. <laughs> what about you, kid? Huh? You want to warm up with the team? Okay, 
Marco. Keep your eyes on the ball. Nice glove work, kid. Some runner. Warm up's over, guys. It's time to play ball. Awesome. Do you want me to take over? <laughs> as fun as it was to hand out popcorn. George was eager to get back to the game. Hey, kid, where you been? Um... Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, kid. Let's go! This is it, folks. After two scoreless innings, it's the Cubby Bears' last chance to break the tie. Wish me luck, George. Ha ha! <laughs> Here I quad. <laughs> Here I two. Uh, just a reminder, folks. Three strikes and you're out. Run! I did it! I hit a home run! Oh. Oops! Run, George, run! <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. And third base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! We're so proud. That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid. Kid? There he is. George loved the museum. Every time he went, he discovered something new. The new North Pole exhibit was frosty fun with its igloos and polar bears. <laughs> and so was the South Pole exhibit with its penguins. <laughs> <gasps> but what was this exhibit? <laughs> oh, these are the museum's new vending machines, George. They dispense food, like milk, fruit, soup, sandwiches. Oh. All you do is insert a coin and... Oh, here, let me get you a coin. Here's a coin, George. My treat. <laughs> Hi, Professor. Hey, how are your plans to explore the poles coming along? You mean Operation Snowgo? Oh, it's a no-go. The Arctic and the Antarctic associations aren't getting along. Each thinks its pole is the best pole. George wasn't sure if he wanted a sandwich or soup or milk or an apple. George wondered what was inside the vending machines and how they worked. bet if both groups sat down and talked over dinner, they'd see how much they have in common. Exactly. Um, my apartment is full of expedition gear, so would you be willing to host? A 
A dinner? Um, well, sure. <laughs> I, I, I guess. Wonderful. Here's a timetable, recipes, menu, and a guest list for tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? It's the only day both groups are in town. I represent the North Pole, of course. The one on top of the world. <laughs> it all depends on how you hold the map. Yes, um, well, thank you for joining us tonight. And may I just say, what is that? <laughs> is that a vending machine? <laughs> wow! George's special dessert started with a special coin. Gnocchi's love of toys was exactly what the George Matic needed. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, why, this is snow on a mountain. My mommy used to make that. <gasps> Mine too. Oh, what do you mean you forgot the entertainment? This is perfect. like the Arctic in here. I'd say more like the Antarctic. Oh, frostbite and icicles. Snow is snow, right? Right. Put her there. Happy to. Well, George, thanks to you, Operation Snow Go is go-going. Uh, George? Ooh. <laughs> As for George, he was busy perfecting his plans for the next george -O -Matic. The subway will take you anywhere in the city, even to ancient Egypt, thanks to the museum. This looks great. It looks exactly like the real thing. See? Oh, that? It's a hawk. It warns people that this is the pharaoh's barge. Ah, my history teacher is going to love it. At least I hope she'll love it. I really need an A. <laughs> There's only one thing left to do. <laughs> see if it floats. Oh, man, this is great. I can see if my boat holds up in bad weather. She takes a dripping and keeps on, uh, floating. Yeah. My history teacher's gonna be so impressed. I mean, I actually did my homework. I need an A to pass the class. George was sure Steve would get an A. His homework floated really well. Unfortunately, it was floating away. Kid, you can't go down there. Oh. Uh, you don't understand. My history homework is in there, and I've just got to get it back. I've just got to. Uh, otherwise, I'll be stuck in class with my kid's sister next year. That's rough. Yeah, you're telling me. Hold on. What? Yeah. Anything that goes down a drain goes to the wastewater treatment plant. Maybe your homework is there. Then we're going there, too. Ah! Oils? 
mostly from car and truck engines, sand and grit from construction or sand used on icy roads in winter, and solids. That means pretty much anything else that ends up in the water. Old shoes, spare parts. Boats? Boats? They'd all be right here. <laughs> Wait, your boat's not here. It's raining. But the sanitation worker said everything that goes down the drain goes here. <laughs> it does, except during heavy rains. The system can't handle all the storm water and it overflows. <sighs> right now, the pipes and tanks are backed up. So anything on its way here isn't going to get here. <laughs> there, it goes down the river to the ocean. <gasps> At least I think that's my boat. Oh, and ancient Egyptians used them and stuff. So when it rains, everything goes into the ocean? Ah. That's awful. Somebody ought to figure out a way to warn people. Yeah, they should paint a model boat with an X through it on the street drains so some other kid doesn't lose his history homework like I did. And while they're at it, they should paint, like, birds and fish and, and little wavy things for water on the street drains. And then, like, paint a coffee cup with an X through it so people know not to litter because it'll end up in the ocean. That's a very good idea, Steve. It is? Um, I mean, yeah, it is. Uh... Does this mean I get extra credit? <laughs> Perhaps. This was a terrific idea for a class project, Steve. <laughs> ah, thanks. Of course, the bad news is you won't get to be in history class with Betsy next year. <gasps> All right! <laughs> yeah! Steve's grade was looking better. <laughs> and so was the water. Because when it comes to litter, monkeys don't monkey around. Neither rain, nor snow, nor turkey, could keep George from watching his favorite band, Lobos de Plata, perform in Endless Park. Gracias. Thank you so much. And now, I'd like to ask if George would come on stage and play with us. You, yes, our number one fan. Come on up. <laughs> Hola, George. I have a drum for you. Ooh. <laughs> Hit it, Marco. Thanks so much for coming. Play anywhere you want. Adios. Hmm. Hey, maybe we should just play right here. <laughs> George is right. This room is too big. And this is like George's lobby. Too much carpet. <laughs> the food court reminded them of Piscetti's. Once again, the lions were too loud. Finally, next to the T-Rex, the band found a perfect spot. Nice! Is it the dinosaur that makes it sound so good? George knew it wasn't the dinosaur. It was the size of the room, no carpet on the floor, and the height of the ceiling. This is a little tune we wrote called 
Hooray for George. don't really have a place to play. Not since they tore down the bandstand. Oh. Hold it, hold it, hang on. This band is unique. If George is your number one fan, then I'm your number two, which is why I've just decided to build a new bandstand. And I'd like you to perform on opening day. Really? Okay, it's a deal. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the all-new Glass Bandstand. Please welcome Lobos de Plata. Hit it, George. <laughs> Thanks to the new bandstand, Lobos de Plata sounded great even when Huntley joined in. <laughs> it was morning in the country, and George was eager to get outside. <coughs> it's just a little rain. I'll get you an umbrella. Let's check the attic. <laughs> Ooh. Uh -huh. I knew I had an umbrella. <laughs> George thought the cart was wonderful. It would be perfect for carrying stuff. Huh. I really should get rid of some of this. <laughs> Annual swap meet tomorrow only. One person's junk is another person's treasure. <laughs> oh, this is great, George. I'll bring all the stuff I want to get rid of. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's the keep pile. That's the get rid of pile. <laughs> Of course. You never know when you might need a sombrero. <laughs> the next day, George hoped that between his sticks and the man's stuff, they'd have something that Bill would trade for. Hmm, got it. <laughs> need it. <laughs> uh, I like her sombrero, though. <laughs> you want to trade the sombrero? Sure. <laughs> You want the cart? Uh-huh. It's a deal. Oh, wait. I just traded it to Mr. Quint. <laughs> Don't worry. Maybe you can make a trade with Mr. Quint. <laughs> well, 
that's a dandy fishing reel, but unfortunately, I just swapped the cart with my brother for this singing whale. Forty-nine tons of krill on the wall, forty-nine tons of krill. No! George found Mr. Quint's brother, Flint, but Flint had traded the cart to his other brother, Winch, for a back massager. Wint had traded the cart to Mrs. Rankins for some soap on a rope. And Mrs. Rankins had traded the cart to Vicky. <laughs> Sorry, George. I just traded the cart to some people from the city. George had worked so hard to get that cart back, and now it was gone for good. There's nothing here that I want. See, I'm an artist. I work with wood, and what I'm looking for are unusual sticks. <laughs> well, these are the best sticks I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> At last, George had a cart. Of course, he no longer had anything to put in it. But that wouldn't last long. Few things captured the attention of a curious little monkey. I wonder what this could be. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's from my mother. Happy birthday, love mom. Aww. Oh, that's so sweet. Is today your birthday? It is. And George and I are going to celebrate. <laughs> I'm late for my appointment. Hold on to this for me, will you, George? I'll be back at 7, and then we'll celebrate. Oh. Bye, George. Hi. If it was my birthday, I'd have a party. <laughs> you want to have a party? <laughs> a surprise party? Even better. <laughs> you know how I throw a party? It's as easy as A, B, C, D. All you need is A, an apartment, B, your buddies, C, a cake, and D, decorations. A, B, C, D. That didn't sound hard at all. You know, a one George arm size is perfect for the average freezer. Cake decorations. It was all so easy with George measurements. He's a monkey named George, got a grin with a hat. He's a furry brown fella and we like him like that. The cake was in the freezer, the poster was on the wall, and the star was no trouble at all. George was ready for his guests. Hello, Giorgio. But not ready for their size. I hope we're not too early. Ah, I see you've got a two Georges tall apartment and furniture to match. Very unique. Hey, 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 he's coming! <laughs> George is right. We have to hide. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, this is too small. Shh. What is that plant I can hide? Yeah, I can see. Oh, yeah. oh, Hi, everybody. Surprise! <laughs> A party? For me? Oh, gee, th thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, me too. 
Uh, uh, how about some music? A George-sized apartment was fine for little monkeys, but not at all good for people-sized people. Ah! <laughs> This was more like it. Everything was the size it should be. Except maybe the cake. Six o'clock, only an hour left, and George had to start over. George wanted to get the sizes right, so he decided to measure everything first. This time, George ordered the right-sized cake. And poster. And chose a better ladder. George, are you home? What is this? To celebrate my birthday? Oh, wow. All my friends and my plumber, my dentist, my barber? They were in your address book. George put everything together. Uh, he did? Oh, thank you, George. Maybe it wasn't so bad being a little monkey in a big <laughs> world after all. And there was one thing his arms were always the right size for. In the city, all kinds of things make music in the spring. Birds, bees, bands, and a certain monkey named George. Oh, thanks! It was for the band. <laughs> well, hi, guys. Gotta run. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> We're running to get Aunt Margaret a card. See ya! We forgot about Mother's Day. Mommy is going to be so surprised. <gasps> George! Huh? We should make a piñata! <laughs> George had popped piñatas before, but he'd never built one. This was gonna be fun. Yeah! That's it! <laughs> Thank you for posing for us, Hundley. <laughs> Hundley was thrilled dachshunds were getting the attention they deserved. wait for everything to bake. Yes. But this would be even better if we had Mommy's serving bowls and sarapes. But how will you get them without Mommy noticing? We think that since Mommy loves walks, you could take her for a longer walk in the park before coming to an avenue. Now everything looks just the way Mommy likes it. We should have gotten her flowers. Hmm. We can make some. Everything smells so good. What's this tasty looking stuff? Oh, glue water. I, I need something to get that taste out of my mouth. Oh, maybe a pickle. Oh, 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 that, that, that was not a, a pickle. Ah, ah, ah. Oh no, look, they'll think it's the signal. I miss the kids. 
Why don't we go get them now? We'll go to a nice restaurant. <gasps> They're coming! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, 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 Quick, everyone, hide! George? Wait! Shh. Oh, okay. Surprise! <gasps> oh my! What a wonderful surprise! Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! And look, we made your piñata! It is beautiful! <laughs> It was a masterpiece. Dale, dale, dale. Nothing says party like a dachshund piñata. To the left! Oh, oh, you just missed! Just a little bit more! Oh, higher! Oh, you almost hit it! Sweet! Ah! Mother's Day ever. And I couldn't have done it without George. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah.